Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Canada Abroad Canadian Immigration Podcast. I'm your host, Deanne Akers Lance, and this week we are going to be talking about how to increase your comprehensive ranking system score. Once applicants have entered their profile into the Express Entry system, one of the questions we receive most often is, how can I increase my comprehensive ranking system score? If you've been tracking the rounds of invitations that have been taking place over the last 12 months, you would have noticed that the score has increased from a minimum of 438 in January of 2019, and most recently we're up to a score of 473. It's quite a substantial increase, and it's due to the fact that more people are applying to Canada and entering the express entry pool on a daily and weekly basis. On average, the government selects people from the express entry pool every two weeks. Now, depending on how many people submit new profiles in those two weeks, that's going to dictate whether the next draw sees a score that's higher or lower. We've seen that the, sc the score sorry, has remained quite high in the 470s and 460s recently, which has caused most people to look at ways on how to increase their score. For some people, they might have more than one option on how to increase their score. For others, there might only be one way. And for others, unfortunately, they may not have any options. So we're going to go through the different options that people can have. Some of these may apply to you and some may not. But it's just to give you an idea of the options that are out there. We might not get too, too detailed on some of these options, but you'll have a general overview whether or not any of these are going to apply to you. The first way to increase your comprehensive ranking system score is through your language test results. If the main applicant has not achieved at least a CLB level nine in each of the four different sections of their language test, then they're not maximizing their comprehensive ranking system score. Some people don't realize, but the language test can go into three or more different sections of your comprehensive ranking system score. It first goes into obviously the score section on language. Okay, but it also goes towards your skills transferability sections because in those sections, they look at your language test results in combination with another factor. So here's a, an application to a, you know, a very common profile. If you're in the system as a federal skilled worker and you have one qualification of a year or longer and you have three years or more of foreign work experience, and you have not achieved a CLB level nine in each section of your language test, you're losing 37 points at a minimum because you would lose 12 points for your skills transferability education, and you'd lose 25 points for skills transferability foreign work experience. If you are an applicant, again, federal skilled worker through Express Entry, and in this case, maybe you had two qualifications or more and at least three years of work experience, you'd be losing up to 57 points from your comprehensive ranking system score. So it's very important to review your language test results and ensure that you got that CLB level nine in listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Because if you didn't, you can definitely rewrite the test and bring up your score in that way. Now, what a CLB level nine is varies depending on the type of test you did, whether you did the CELPIP, the IELTS, the TEF. So you would just need to check in and see what a CLB level nine is for your test type and then confirm what you achieved in each section of that test. Now, also with the language test results, if you've written one test for your first official language, but maybe you have some proficiency in the second official language, whether that's going to be English or French. If you're able to pass the second official language test with an intermediate level, which is about a CLB level seven in each section of the test, it can give you up to 24 points for your second official language and another 30 points for being bilingual. So that's 54 extra points that you can get. 
So if you think that you do have a bit of proficiency in that second official language, it might be worth studying further or even doing the test and just seeing how you go. The second way that you can look at increasing your comprehensive ranking system score is by furthering your education. If you are an applicant who has one qualification of at least a year or longer, you could look at trying to get a second qualification because this would give you extra points in the education section, but it will also give you extra points in the skills transferability sections, depending whether you choose to do that second qualification in Canada or in your home country. Now, it's important to note, if you are looking at getting a second qualification, that you'll only get points for having two qualifications if one of them was done for a program that was at least three years or longer, and the second qualification was a full one-year program or longer. So what this means is with the comprehensive ranking system for the education section, this can add seven points if you are a married applicant. So that's just under the education section. But if we look at the skills transferability section, this could increase either by 12 points or an extra 25 points, depending again on your language test results. And that's why sometimes it gets a bit confusing looking at the skills transferability sections because it looks at two things combined. So sometimes by increasing one, you can bring up your score, or sometimes you need to increase both factors to bring up the score. The next way to earn additional points on the comprehensive ranking system score would be with a job offer from a Canadian employer. But the offer itself is not what adds points to the application. You would actually need to have a positive labor market impact assessment as well. So, you know, just a general idea on what this is, the Canadian employer would basically have to advertise the position in Canada for a minimum of four weeks, interview any Canadians that applied, and only if they couldn't find a suitable Canadian to fill the position, could they then apply for that labor market impact assessment to bring in a foreign worker. If the government agrees that they did their due diligence and they couldn't find a Canadian, they would approve the labor market impact assessment. And then depending on the level of position being offered to you, it can add 50 or 200 points. To get the 200 points, it has to be senior management. So this is an occupation code that will start with zero, zero. Anything that starts with a single zero or any other digit would only qualify for the 50 additional points. The next way that you can increase your comprehensive ranking system score is with Canadian work experience. If you manage to get that job offer and the labor market impact assessment and went over on a work permit, once you had worked in Canada for one year, you could get 35 extra points as a married applicant. And then as you obtain a second or third year, these points would increase as well. The other thing to consider is some people work for multinational companies and they might be able to get what's called an intercompany transfer. So this is where you work for the company in your home country and they have a branch or a subsidiary and affiliate in Canada and they're willing to transfer you to that office. If they do that, it doesn't need a labor market impact assessment, so it's much easier for the employer to transfer you. So that means you wouldn't get the additional points for the job offer. But what happens is once you've worked in Canada for a full year, you will then get those extra 50 or 200 points added to your score, and you'll also get the additional points for the one year of Canadian work experience. So this means after one year, you could get 85 extra points or 235, depending on the level of your position. So just because the job offer that you have might not require a labor market impact assessment, it doesn't mean that after a year in Canada, it won't add value. It definitely will. But you would just need to see if those points are going to be enough to bring you up into the threshold of what's being picked at that time. For some people, even the 85 points might, 
not be enough to bring them up. And in those cases, they might want to see if that job offer and the work permit that they're on might be able to lead to a provincial nomination. And this is the next topic that we're going to be talking about because this is the single best way to increase your comprehensive ranking system score. Because with the provincial nomination, you get 600 extra points added to your score. The first thing just to remember as we go through the provincial programs is that we're only going to be looking at the ones associated with express entry. Lots of provinces do have other programs in place for people not in the express entry system or for people who want to start a business, but we're not going to be looking at those right now because they are not related to express entry or the comprehensive ranking system score. Now, as we look at the provinces, the one thing to note is, well, Many of the provinces have programs for express entry. A large majority of them right now require that you have a job offer. So unless you already have a job offer from an employer in Canada, there are going to be a lot of provinces that you're not eligible to get a provincial nomination from. So what we're going to be focusing on actually today is just the programs that do not require a job offer. Because if you already have that job offer in place, then the odds are that the employer is maybe going through that labor market impact assessment to get you extra points, or they might be putting that job offer through the provincial program. Now, the other thing just to note is if you receive a job offer from a Canadian employer, if it is going through one of the provincial routes, each province has their own requirements in terms of how long that business needs to have been operational for, how many Canadian citizens or permanent residents they currently employ on a full-time basis. And that number will vary depending on where they're located, uh, what their annual turnover is. So just because you get the job offer, you'll also have to check in with those provinces to make sure the business meets those minimum requirements. Now, going back to the provinces that do not need a job offer in order to obtain a provincial nomination, The first one is Alberta. Now, for their program associated with express entry, what they do is anybody who's in the express entry system and selected that they were willing to live and work in the province of Alberta, if they have a valid profile and their score is at least 300 or above, they can automatically be considered by that province. And what they do is throughout the year, they will select people based on occupation. So it's not based on your score being, you know, a 450 or 460, as long as you have 300 or above. If your occupation is within the field that they're looking at, they can select you. Now, if they're interested in your profile, you will actually receive a message through your MyCIC account. And this is where you would have created the express entry profile. So you'll usually get a notification that you have a new message sent to your email address. You would log in and you would see a message there from Alberta that they're interested in your profile and that you need to contact them directly for the forms that you would then need to complete. Because with this, just if Alberta does contact you, it means they're interested in your profile, but there's still application forms that you would need to submit directly to them and information that would be requested of you to confirm that you meet the eligibility of their program. If they are then satisfied and happy with everything, then they will issue the provincial nomination and those 600 points will then get added to your express entry profile. So with Alberta, it's sort of a case of don't contact us, we'll contact you. As long as you select it on your express entry profile that you are willing to live and work there, then you're automatically eligible to be considered by them. The only time you would contact them is after they had initiated contact with you that they're interested in your profile. The next province that doesn't need a job offer is Saskatchewan, and they have what's called an expression of interest system. With them, as long as you have an express entry profile that is valid and you can achieve a minimum of 60 points on their specific provincial scoring system. So again, this is a completely different scoring system from the comprehensive ranking system score. This is initiated by the province of Saskatchewan and they've set out their own requirements. So as long as you can get 60 points on their scale, you could be eligible to create an expression of interest with them. 
Now, how this works is you would already have to be in the express entry system with an active profile. You would then go to the Saskatchewan government's provincial website and check what your score is. And you also have to check that your occupation is not ineligible for their program because they have a list currently of certain occupations that they will not accept. So if your occupation is on that list, then again, you would not be eligible to put in an expression of interest with them. But as long as your occupation is not on that list and you can get the 60 points or above, you create an expression of interest with them. So you'll be putting in the details of your express entry profile, your occupation code, language test results, the basic information. They then give you a score based on their provincial government scoring system, and they do draws throughout the year based on that score. Most recently, they've been picking people with a score of 69 or above. So depending on what your score is, you may or may not get selected. So just because you can put in an expression of interest, it does not guarantee that you will end up getting a provincial nomination from them. Now, again, here, if your expression of interest is selected, there will be more application forms that you would need to submit to them and supporting documents you would need to provide just for them to verify again that they're happy with your application. And only if it's accepted will you then get the provincial nomination and get the points added to your profile. The next province that doesn't need a job offer is Manitoba. But with Manitoba, you don't need a job offer, but you have to have some kind of connection to the province. So whether this is a friend or a relative, or you've previously worked or studied in Manitoba before, those are connections that you can then use to access their system. But if you've never worked in Manitoba or studied there, you don't have a job offer or a friend or a family member who is a Canadian citizen or permanent resident living physically in Manitoba, then you wouldn't be able to apply. But if you are eligible to apply, you would put in your expression of interest with Manitoba through their provincial government website. And then again, you're gonna get assigned a score based on their provincial scoring system. And only those with a high enough score would get selected throughout the year. And again, here, if you're selected, there will be further application forms and supporting documents that you need to submit in order to get that provincial nomination and the 600 points added to your score. The next province that doesn't need a job offer is Ontario. Now with Ontario, it's the human capital priority stream and then sort of the sub streams for tech people and French speaking people that you would be looking at. Now with Ontario, as long as you have selected that you were living, sorry, willing to live and work there, and then another question would have propped up on your express entry profile asking if you're willing to share that information with Ontario. As long as you selected yes, then your profile can automatically be considered by the province when they're doing their selections. Now, you have to have at least a bachelor's degree. So if you created your profile, you might see that bachelor's degree and three-year diploma go under the same category. So for some people with a three-year diploma, they could end up getting you know, contacted by Ontario, but you have to remember that you need actually a bachelor's degree to have that application get approved later on down the line. So there's little things like that that you will also need to consider and look at, but we're not gonna delve into those details today. We'll do that on a later episode when we're looking at it more in depth. Now, if we look at the people that Ontario has been selecting over the last 12 months, I haven't picked anybody who actually has a comprehensive ranking system score below 439. Lately, they've been looking at people with scores up in the 460s. So again, what they're selecting is based on your comprehensive ranking system score. And in some cases, it's your comprehensive ranking system score and your occupation. So if you're in the express entry system, and you have a low comprehensive ranking system score, then it's very unlikely that you would end up actually getting selected by Ontario. Now, if we again look at the draws they've done over the last 12 months, they also did selections based on specific occupation codes. But with these, you still had to have a minimum score. So whether that was 439 or up in the 450s or 460s, 
you had to have the specified comprehensive ranking system score and you had to have your profile under one of the applicable occupation codes. So last year, those included other administrative service managers, corporate sales managers, professional occupations and business management consulting, advertising, marketing, and public relations managers, retail and wholesale trade managers, financial auditors and accountants, registered nurses and registered psychiatric nurses, financial managers, other financial officers, and then managers in customer and personal service. Then if we look at the human capital priority stream under their sub-program, the tech pilot program, the lowest that they selected in the last 12 months was those with a score of 435, and their profile had to be under one of the following occupation codes. So software engineers and designers, computer programmers and interactive media developers, computer engineers, web designers and developers, database analysts and data administrators, or computer and information systems managers. They also selected people who were fluent in French and English. So you had to have a valid language test for both the French and English language. So whether it was an IELTS or a CELPIP for English and then a TEF for French. But again, they also looked at your comprehensive ranking system score. So those with a lower score, again, did not end up getting selected. The next province that does not require the job offer is Prince Edward Island. With them, you would go to their provincial government website and you would lodge an expression of interest. Again, just putting in the details similar to the ones asked on your express entry profile. And then if they do select your profile based on the details entered, they will contact you. And then again, you need to submit certain application forms and supporting documents for them to review. If they're satisfied, they'll issue you with the provincial nomination and you'll get those points added to your score. The last province is Nova Scotia. Now, they had listed that they had the express entry program for people on a certain list of occupations. And how it would work was when their program opened, you could go and submit your file to them if you had work experience in a specific occupation. But that program never opened in 2019. Instead, what they did was they did their own selections going into the express entry system and selecting candidates based on their work experience. So they called this new selection the labor market priority stream. And if we look at what they were selecting last year, they took people from the pool who were listed that they were accountants or auditors. They took early childhood educators. They took nurses. They took carpenters. They took people in the marketing fields and people who were bilingual. So it really varied throughout the year in terms of what they're selecting. So as long as you are in the express entry system and you've checked off that you're willing to live and work in Nova Scotia, then you potentially could be eligible to be selected by them through that labor market priority stream if your occupation is one that they are looking at. But even if they select people with your occupation code, you might not necessarily get picked because they only have a number of people that they're picking. So whether they're also going to take your age into consideration or your years of work experience, they haven't specified that. So as long as you're in there with a valid profile, you can at least be considered by them. Now you'll notice with most of, well, all of these programs that we've listed is you had to be willing to live and work in that province. So let's say that you only selected off British Columbia, Alberta, and Ontario. If Nova Scotia was looking for someone with your background, if you hadn't selected them on your application, then they won't contact you. So we always say if you really think you need that provincial nomination, on your express entry profile, when you've been asked where you're willing to live and work, you're best to select all provinces if you're actually open to receiving a nomination from any province. And this is keeping in mind that your intention has to be that you are going to actually live and work in that province. So if you have no intention of living and working in Manitoba or Nova Scotia, then you shouldn't be selecting those provinces at all. Now, so just a, a quick recap, um, there are quite a bit of programs out there, but again, we just looked at the ones today using the express entry system. 
For some of them, it's sort of a don't call us, we'll call you situation. So the only ones that you can actually right now go and actively do something is by putting an expression of interest in with Saskatchewan if you meet their 60 point cutoff with Prince Edward Island, or if you have a connection to the province, you can also put one in for Manitoba. With the other ones, as long as you said you're willing to live and work there, then they can contact you if they're interested. And again, if you do get a provincial nomination, it will give you 600 extra points. Now, the last ways that we can look at increasing somebody's comprehensive ranking system score involves their spouses. So if you are single with no accompanying spouse, whether that's that you're married or you're in a common law relationship, then unfortunately, these will not apply to you. If you are married or in a common law relationship with somebody, you could earn extra points first for their language abilities. So if they are fluent or intermediate or can speak English or French at all, you could get them to do a approved language test. And this can add up to a maximum of 20 points to your application. To get the full 20 points, they would have to get a CLB level nine in each of the four sections, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. But if they scored lower in any section, then the points would just go down from there. So you might get zero points at a minimum or 20 at a maximum. The next thing they'll look at is your spouse's level of education. So if your spouse has a qualification of a, a year or longer, you could get that assessed and get an educational credential assessment for them. And that could add between six and 10 extra points to your application. So six would be for a one year qualification or longer, seven for a two year, eight for a three year, nine points if they have more than one qualification, and then 10 points for a master's degree or higher. And the next thing that they'll look at is if your spouse or common law partner has ever worked in Canada before, then this can also add extra points to your application. But again, it's nothing major. So unless you're really borderline in terms of what they're selecting at the moment, this might not be enough to bring you up to where you need to be. Now, this being said, if you are a married applicant or you are in a common law relationship, depending on your age, you might score higher if you declare yourself to be single. Now, how this works is you would create your profile and you would still declare that you are married or in a common law relationship. But if you list them as not accompanying, you would then be scored as a single applicant, which again, depending on your age, might be higher than what you would be receiving as a married applicant. But if you do decide to do this, you just need to make sure that you're aware of how this process would work. Because if you are given an invitation to apply and you have declared that you are married or common law, but that they're not accompanying, they are not going to get permanent residency with you at this stage. You would actually have to sponsor them later on through the family class once you were physically in Canada as a permanent resident. So this you know, might be just something you want to look at in an extreme case where it's your only option and this could maybe bring you up to where you need to be. Because again, you will end up being separated while you have to sponsor this person under the family class. So we now have gone through all the different ways that you can add points to your comprehensive ranking system score. So most notably was the main applicant, if they did not have a CLB level nine in all sections of their language test, redoing the test and bringing the scores up could add quite a few points to the application. If you can add a second official language test, you can get extra points for that. If you can increase your level of education, whether that's in your home country or if you choose to study in Canada, that can add points to your application. Adding additional work experience can sometimes bring up your score. This is for people who are under three years of work experience. So once you've got three years or more, then you sort of maxed out on those points. If you can get a job offer in Canada from a Canadian employer, and they are willing to either do the labor market impact assessment or put the job offer through a provincial nomination, or if you're being transferred by your own company through an intercompany transfer, that can add points once you've been working there for a year on a valid work permit. We also recapped the different provincial programs that you could look at that are associated with express entry. 
And then also just how you can add points to your spouse's language abilities or their level of education. Now, as we said, for some people, these may be able to add points to your application. Some people, unfortunately, their score may not be able to increase in any way. So it's just important to look at your profile, see if you can increase your score and kind of accept what your comprehensive ranking system score is and whether or not you're actually going to be successful in getting that invitation to apply or not. Because your express entry profile is going to be valid for 12 months. So you'll be included in all of the draws that take place over that 12 months. And after that, you could recreate your profile for a further 12 months as long as all of your documents are valid. Thanks for tuning in. And in the upcoming episodes, we are going to be looking at study permits. So people wanting to study in Canada, as well as going through some of the provincial programs a little bit more in depth because we sort of breezed over them today, but we will be going over the fine details for those people who meet those criteria and could potentially be looking at receiving a provincial nomination from those different programs. That concludes this week's episode of the Canada Abroad podcast. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope that you'll tune in to next week's episode. Oh, 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 oh,